Oh, there he is. Getting a quick lesson on all the controls inside this cool seaplane. It's gonna take off in a couple of hours to go pick up somebody and take them to Fort Lauderdale. I'm not getting up there. <laughs> And welcome to Space for Three. Today we are here at Miami Seaplane Base. It's a historical site. It used to belong to Shock. Um, it's one of the terminals for seaplanes here in the city of Miami. And we're going to get a tour. So make sure you guys keep it locked. So come along. We got plenty of space. Gio. just met a pilot named David and he's actually gonna give us a little tour inside one of the planes and this beauty right here this is what he flies so he's gonna give us a tour inside of a passenger plane or a charter plane yeah he's a pretty cool guy very knowledgeable of all the airplane the seaplanes here yep so come along we're gonna show you what it's like inside let's go EX model which basically means that it has 876 shaft horsepower. Shaft horsepower basically means that all the uh, the propeller isn't driven by an engine it's actually driven by the hot air created by the engine. Oh cool. Yeah cool. so if you actually look at it it's, it's actually pretty good floating. So, you, so on a regular propeller you actually can't turn it because it's kind of this Oh wow. Um, it's what's called a constant speed propeller so basically when you turn the engine on the propeller actually spins and uh, goes into goes into a form that better grabs the air and pushes it backwards. So this is what's called the, uh, the feather position. So what this basically does is it makes it so that all the forces on the propeller are equal. So it could be like 100 mile an hour winds and this propeller won't really move that much. That aircraft has the same thing, but it needs it less because it's locked in by the engine. But this airplane, because it's freely floating like that, um, it actually has to be feathered. Um, cool. It's a turbine engine, so it, it doesn't have a. What that basically means is, it's a, It's basically a jet engine, um, and the jet engine basically powers the propeller. So what that allows it to actually do is the airplane can actually go in reverse. Oh wow! Cool. Yeah. So you'll you'll see like when aircrafts like this land, you'll hear a really loud like rumbling sound, and that's the propeller actually going in reverse. See those black tips on top of the on top of the wings? Yeah, these, these black triangles. Uh huh. That's oh, stall, those. That's what's called a uh, a stall kit. So a stall in an airplane is basically when the, when the airplane is no longer able to fly. Mm -hmm. Um. So what those called those are called uh, VGs, wing uh, vortex generators. It's a really long name, but all it really means is I put these plastic things on top of the wings so that the airplane stalls at a much lower speed. Than... What about this little thing right here? That probe. Yeah. That's a that's what's called a pitot tube. It basically takes the ambient the pressure outside, and as well as the uh, the the ram air pressure going into the tube, which is that silver thing right there, the ram air pressure, and it basically tells you how fast the airplane's going through the air. Though there's like three different speeds for an airplane. There's airspeed, ground speed, and calibrated speed. No one cares about calibrated speed, and ground speed just lets you know what time you're getting home. But airspeed is all <laughs> pilots really worry about. If your airspeed's too low, um, the airplane falls out of the sky. Airspeed's too high, airplane falls apart. How do we get up there? Jump. I'll show you. So you see these steps here? Okay. You're going to go right foot first, and you're going to do the same thing going back down. Okay. Right foot first, left foot first, and then 
Right. You can't do that. That seems easy. No, I don't think I can. Right. Hold my watch. All right. Okay, so this is what's called the cockpit. This, it starts from these two seats um, of the 208 Grand Caravan, the EX model. Um, you'll find that airplanes are sold like cars, <laughs> so they try to get all the good stuff. Um, this is the thrust lever. This basically, this basically uh, dictates how much power you're actually, how much fuel you're actually dumping into the engine. So this is actually connected to the engine itself. Um, and I believe it has a, what's called a FADEC system. I think it's a FADEC, I'm not sure. But it basically monitors the engine performance. So in an older airplane, like the one out there, you actually have to monitor and make sure your engine, engine is running the most efficient. But with this airplane, you can, um, you can kind of, you can, it kind of does all the efficiency stuff for you. So remember when I told you that the propeller could, could spin? Right. That's what this does. This is, this is called the prop lever. This basically dictates what angle the prop's at. So you actually judge the prop lever via the prop RPM gauge. And that is not in here. You'd have to see it on this screen right here. Wait, oops. All right, You can actually see it. Here, advisory system test okay. This is the audio output test. This is the audio output test. Here, advisory battery okay. This is the basic um, thing that you would see. So this right here is the prop RPM gauge. So you would always want this somewhere in the green. And that would basically tell you, you know, um, the entire, you know, how fast the, the, the propeller is actually moving. So, this is called the uh, fuel condition lever. So, this is basically a quality of life lever. Um, so, there's two settings. There's low idle and high idle. What low idle does is basically there's, consider the airplane has 24 valves mm -hmm. that shoot fuel into the engine. When you are on low idle, you're shooting 12, you're shooting uh, only 12 valves of fuel. And when you're in high idle, you're shooting 24 valves of fuel. I mean, you're shooting all 24 of them. And basically what that does is it, it increases the amount of, uh, it reduces the amount of time it requires to get power. So air, so aircrafts have to do what's called a go around. That's whenever you're doing a landing, you don't like the way it looks. It can happen at any phase of flight, but normally you'd have the airplane in high idle. And in case you see something maybe, especially because you're a seaplane, normally you'll see like a boat or a jet ski because they just don't care. Mm -hmm. So you have to get out the way. So you'd, right. have to put, you'd have to jam this forward and make sure that the aircraft's in high idle. And that would actually um, help you get out of the way of that aircraft. Rather, if you were in low idle, if you jam this forward, the aircraft will actually bog down. So you'll actually have less power. Gotcha. So you'll push this forward and the aircraft will go whoa rather than if you had this in high idle as soon as you put this up it's one keeps going up so you actually use this to save fuel i think um and then high idle is for when you're doing takeoffs or when you're doing landings um this is your flap lever so what this basically does is this makes the wing bigger so <clears throat> why do you want a bigger wing because normally when you're landing in places like this you're normally landing at pretty if you had the flaps retracted you'd be landing at insane air speeds so you you undo this so that you can um one slow yourself down and two land at a, land at a much lower airspeed so if you land at 90 knots now you can land at 80 knots and if you go all the way out instead of landing at 80 knots maybe now you can land at 70. Mm -hmm. so what that allows you to do is just land slower and for any aircraft landing as slow as you can is the best thing because you want to get slowed you want to get slowed and stopped as fast as you can um this is your uh, gear lever. So basically, I can't really touch it because I believe it's not a squawk switch. What a squawk switch is, is if, you, if you pull the gear lever up, um, the squawk switch will tell the gear don't come up because the airplane's on the ground. So I don't think this airplane has a squawk switch. So I believe if I pull this up, the gear will actually come up. <laughs> this is your parking brake for the aircraft. This just keeps it grounded. Um, pretty hard to... Uh, pretty hard to uh, believe it's a parking brake, but that's a parking brake. These are all just lights. These are all just control the lights. This is your air conditioning. Um, this is your air conditioning temperature. Um, this, all this, all pretty, this all pretty much has to do with the air conditioning. This is just your defrosting. 
Um, these are your breakers. So basically every, every avionic is connected to a breaker. So in case you have a problem, one of these breakers will actually pop out. Oh, okay, cool. Um, so whenever you see one that's popped out, you want to push it in. Um, for certain pilots, they'll actually pop them out because this aircraft makes a lot of noise mm -hmm. when something's going on. Basically, when the airplane's getting close to a stall, which normally happens during landing, which is what you want, you want to be as slow as possible, um, the stall warning horn will go off. Which, if you're a passenger and you're, you know, relaxed, you don't want to hear a dut, 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 you know, going off. Right, yeah, so, you will get scared. <laughs> yeah, so for the pilots, they actually pull that out so that the passengers don't hear it. Um, these are all just, um, these are, these are how the engine is started and things like that. Um, this is your, just your lights. These are, these control the, the lights outside of the aircraft. This is, this basically tells you that there's a problem with the aircraft and when you, um, when you fix the problem, you turn that back on. You press that and then basically, um, lets the aircraft know the problem's averted or the, it's no longer an issue at the moment. And this is the this is the gold this is the holy grail of the whole thing. This is your autopilot. This makes life way easier. And uh, you ever heard of a black box? Yeah. Okay. So this aircrafts of this size normally don't have black boxes. Um, normally, just because that stuff weighs a lot, um, especially for an aircraft like this where weight is actually a huge is a big deal. Um, the difference between 30 pounds and you know, 30 pounds and 31 pounds is the difference between whether an aircraft can take off or land. This is a 185 Cessna Skywagon. Uh, I believe it's 270 horsepower. And funny enough, these airplanes are really popular up north because of the high altitude. So my aircraft's a 172, has a 180 horsepower engine. Would not work up north. We just finished doing some body work on it. Um, it was originally a tail dragger, so what that basically means is there was a wheel in the back at one point. Okay. Okay. Um, and then one guy said, one guy bought it and was like, I don't want it to be a tail dragger. I like flying airplanes on the water. And he put a, uh, he put a uh, float, he put floats on it. It's actually a simple process. Um, normal people do it, like people who just own airplanes. Mm -hmm. They'll just jack the airplane up. They'll unscrew the bolts and then they'll put the. Uh, put the wheels back on. It's apparently in like up north in like Alaska and like Connecticut and stuff. It's a common right. thing. Oh, okay. It's common for your dad to have an airplane that also flies in the water apparently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll see like if you spin this, it doesn't it won't. spin freely. Yeah. It's connected to the engine. Oh, okay. So this is a six cylinder engine. Um, you'll find it in the car. Yeah. Um, built by Continental, which is a company that makes, that's famous for making six cylinder, six cylinder airplane engines for the 185 and up. Um, it goes all the way to the Cessna 207, which is just this, but it keeps getting bigger until you get to the 208, which is that airplane right there. All right, guys, that concludes our visit here at the Miami Seaplane Base. I hope you all enjoyed it, and big shout out to David for that little tour that he did and all his knowledge for sharing that with me and all of you guys watching. If any of you guys are interested, um, and checking this place out you can go to their website which I'm going to link in the description below but it is miamiseabaseplane.com and they have prices for events of all sizes that you can planify to do here so if you want to check that out we'll leave the link in the description and don't forget to give us this video a like uh, and subscribe and get notified for uh, future videos and don't forget to meet new faces see new places and always leave a space for love bye peace